One of the things I've been thinking about this morning is the uh, that distinction we make between inside and outside. Uh, I guess it's just one of those kind of binary decisions that we make about pretty everything, really. But um, specifically in relation to the senses. I say this because there's there's kind of two sets of senses, isn't there? You know what I mean? There's the what are sometimes called the extraceptive senses, and then there's the interoceptive senses, and and this is in like in perception I'm talking about. So the extraceptive sense, senses are things like sight. You know, where something you know notionally kind of outside of your body becomes accessible through your eyes, and then there's hearing. You know, again, an extraceptive sense in which you know. Compression waves do that thing in your ears and give you information about sounds outside your body, and, and the same with with touch. Obviously, there's a closer proximity, and the same and a kind of related thing, at least with um, taste and smell. I mean, they're not really outside of your body, but they're on the outside of um, sensory membranes, at least. So, um, so there's all that kind of set, but then there's another set of interoceptive sensors which give you information about what's happening notionally inside your body. Things like, you know, listening to your own heartbeat or feeling um, the, the, the temperature inside your body or feeling a, a sense of movement inside your body or, you know, or, or pains, that kind of thing, pleasures. This, this stuff that happens inside of you. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a bit odd, really. I suppose why I think it's odd is because, and I think I'm right in saying this, that's the, um, that in, in terms of kind of neuroscience, what I've been reading about this is that that whole network of, um, of neuronal pathways has input and output, um, regions isn't the right word, but has input and output functions. Um, and the input is consistent from, sens from sensory organs. So the... Um, you know, the sensory organs, both the internal and external organs of sense, the ones I've just been talking about in terms of extraceptive and interoceptive, all of those organs of sense kind of feed into one bank of neurons, if I can oversimplify for effect. And then um, the output from that process goes to, you know, to the body and does various things. You know what I mean? So your pupils dilate or your hairs on your, on your back of your hand rise up or... Um, you know, your heartbeat increases or, or you run away or something like that. So there's all series of, um, of, of embodied actions that take place as a result of that, the, of that output. But the input, as I say, it doesn't just come from the outside world, it also comes from inside of your body. So there's an in, there's a, so you, in, in a sense, your body is outside of you. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. Um, which is a bit weird, really. I think it's, it's just, I think I'm just getting caught up in the language, but there is some kind of weird sense in which your body itself, even in its most kind of um, intimate movements and, 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 and close details, is somehow out of this kind of self thing. And indeed, the actions that's taken by the body, you know, given that, you know, as I say, the, 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 the outputs from all of those, uh, those uh, sense processing mechanisms feed back into the body again to uh, initiate actions of one kind or another. The, uh, those actions are outside of yourself as well, because those are those, the, the actions that the self carries out. So this thing, this kind of self thing, is this weird um, uh, interface, that's not quite the right word, but it's this weird kind of film between the inside and the outside, Actually, that's something Sam Beckett talks about. I can't remember his quotation right now. But it, has, it is this weird kind of, uh, as I say, this complex f folded, involuted film uh, between the input and the output. But it's not coterminous with the body because the body itself is part of that input and part of the output, or it's where the, what the output feeds to. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know where it goes, really. I suppose it's just part of that whole thing about the self being a kind of holographic projection, not holographic projection, but some kind of a projection um, that doesn't really exist in reality. You know, it's just a um, an effect, probably a useful effect, but an effect of this 
um, of this complex film, complex sheet, this network that exists where the input from all the whole, from all of the world, not, not just the external world, but the world of our bodies as well, from the whole material world, kind of feeds in and then feeds out, almost like it's a filter or something like that. Maybe it's a filter, maybe that's a better word. Some kind of processing um, filter. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, that makes any sense. 